Brains and joining me today is the illustrious Walkman. And Walkman, tell the people what they'll be seeing today. All right, and well, in the Transatlantic Splatoon League, we've got two divisions, Europe and North America here. And on the Europe side of things is what we're going to be looking at here today. We've got good ones coming for you today. First up, Team Olive versus El Firmament. And then later, we've got Gagaku versus, um, I believe, Ethereal. So yeah. that's going to be some good ones right there. And we've also got a select uh, map pool for this league. And that's going to go through every map in the game. But I believe each map only appears on one mode. Yes, that is correct. I believe it's uh, five in splat zones and then four in all the other modes because we're sitting on 17 maps right at the moment. But this week in particular, we've got splat zones on Inkblot Art Academy, Tower Control on Mako Mart, Rainmaker on Walleye Warehouse, splat zones on Schellendorf Institute, Clan Blitz, Snapper Canal, Tower Control on Arowana Mall, Splat Zones on Blackbelly Skate Park, Rainmaker on Muscle Forge Fitness, and finally, Clan Blitz on Moray Towers. So, some pretty good representation like you were talking about. Yeah, definitely there. And it's going to be seeing how these teams have maybe prepared for this week because they've known about these maps for quite some time now and probably have been using them in scrims and whatnot. So, going to be getting into this one really soon here. And on the side of Team Olive, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to play this one out. As we do know, they did have that recent addition to the team, PokeFan. Well, since PokeFan is a very new player um, to competitive Splatoon, definitely being a top player um, now herself, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, cope with that. Because in some tournaments, they haven't been performing quite as well as some would hope. Yeah, not as well as some would hope. The last time that these two teams played in the same tournament, at least as far as I've been able to find, it was uh, Squidboard's March, the Squidboard Splat Series. They actually both tied for fifth. Now, they didn't play each other, but they did tie for fifth there. Olive also did get 33rd at that fourth WFB Cup. That was another recent result. But 33rd out of 208 teams in a Japanese tournament setting, not too bad. So it, it has been interesting to see how they've come together and kind of adapted a lot of names that people are familiar with. Nike and Dude kind of been on the back burner now, taking a short break. Uh, but it's been good to see them kind of grow and learn together because I know Pokefan is a backline player, I believe, right? Yeah, she pretty much sticks to that charger, um, splat charger at that. So it's going to be Stingray coming out from her most of the time. And honestly, although she hasn't been maybe, say, a top player for long, I think she's making a tremendous strides towards becoming one. And w especially with the team as experienced as Olive guiding her, um, she's going to be doing a lot of great work here today. I think her, her main thing is she just needs to work on her confidence. That's her level. She's a great player. Um, she just needs to be more confident in her abilities, and she's going to do wonderful things, especially in this league, um, as teams are going to go week by week trying to grow with each other and then go into that final stage together. Speak yeah, speaking of teams that have grown, uh, back when they were Les Stralimars, uh, El Firmament was a, a growing team that you started to see towards the end of Splatoon 1 really pick it up. Now in Splatoon 2, they've solidified themselves as a lot of people would put them as a, a top 10 Western team. And uh, they've got a pretty consistent roster this entire time. I know ARMS, Brissario, uh, LeMonk, and uh, Getway here, all names that have been with them for quite a while, running pretty consistent comps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and speaking of comps here, I know something I've seen in the past from Getway on the side of El Ferment is he does like to run those splatlings. And if he gets control of maybe top mid or even those snipe areas, he can pretty much lock out a, a team. So we're going to be able to see what he elects to go with on the side of El Ferment. We actually see a custom Jet Scorcher on the other side. And then on the side of El Ferment, Getway's actually going to be going with the Sloshing Machine Neo. So pretty recent addition um, to the game. Um, so we're going to be seeing how he works that one out. But we've already got Soren here up at the top. Uh, has to back down a little bit. And so far, Team Olive is actually looking pretty good. They've already got one pick. Soren gets another. And if he's able to get that pick right there, yeah. Soren looking really good so far. And this is exactly how Olive wants to start it off. Mm-hmm. I'm about to make the comment. There's a Dynamo Roller here. This is like Splatoon 1 all over again. Is Rosario on that Dynamo Roller going to get the kill there with that Splat Bomb? But it's going to be a race to the top of this map. Both sides are going to try to set up their long-range players up there. I love what Soren did at the very beginning, making that push up there. The tri is so good. As you see, Sendo on the Range Blaster, I believe, going to get a kill over there on that Slosh Machine Neo. Pretty interesting back and forth here. We need to see a little bit more presence in the middle from El Firmament. And this Monkey going to go down, maybe a little bit haphazard jumping into Soren. Yeah, right now it seems like top middle of the map may be going in favor of El Firmament. 
but nice pick there coming out from Getway. They're gonna have to be pushed back a little bit, and Olive actually responded very well right there, as El Firmament was getting a good amount of map control, but Olive just comes straight at them, with Soren leading the way, then allowing Sendo to come in, and now they're looking really good once again. We do see Pokefan right there with that uh, custom Jet Squelcher just controlling the top as Soren goes in, and now they've got tremendous map control, and this is where Soren can definitely go in on the team right before he goes down, as I say that. <laughs> Soren does love going in and unfortunately does go down there. But this team comp that you're seeing from Olive right now, they're running that custom Jet Squelcher as you've been talking about, but the Range Blaster as well, it gives them a lot of chip damage and blast damage from long range. When they can set themselves up and defend, it's really difficult to get past. As you see Sendo doing a pretty good job trying to clean this up, get his team back into the middle, an important kill there on that Slosh Machine. Up goes the rain and Dynamo not going to be able to get out of there. And now they've got to work through this defense once again. Yeah, unfortunately spotted out that stealth jump um, for El Ferment right there. And now once again, Sendo and the rest of Team Olive do have control. We do see the, the Stingray coming out from Pokefan. Sendo calls it out immediately that there's a flank on the left side. They try and team up on him together, but let's see what Arm can do. Sendo's in a pretty bad position. Actually manages to get a trade, so that was a pretty decent trade there for Sendo. And right now, El Ferment is going to have to do something if they want to get back into this game here. It's a start right now with Getway trying to get back out, but no, it's picked off right away by, I believe it was Urza right there. So it's looking pretty good for Team Olive. Rosario's trying to get control of this middle area, but Team Olive still has a decent amount of men um, right on their plat right there to kind of push them back. Mm -hmm. And that was some great defense by Pokefan there. Pokefan knew, I guess, got called out that two people were coming from that right side. Backed up there, got some chip damage off, but more importantly, gave a lane for Erza to come in and pick up the kills. Now you're going to see that Stingray come in as Pokefan's going to come back into this action here pretty quick. And once again, it is all of abusing their range advantage right now. I mean, the only range that you see from El Firmman at the moment is that Dynamo Roller. And I feel like when your best range threat is a Dynamo Roller, uh, I, you got to pull out something creative. Yeah, for sure here. And I think that's something that some some teams may have a little bit of misconception with uh, Black Belly Skate Park in particular is the range is actually very good here to control the top uh, middle of the map. And there's also a lot of angles where especially that range blaster send though can get you know, just the right amount of range to get a kill. So I think teams should definitely experiment with more range here as we do see on the side of Team Olive working out for them so far. Once you get a strong hold, it can be pretty good. We do see Pokefan jumped out. She's going to be popping that Stingray most likely, yeah to help out a teammate. She does manage to get the kill right there onto one of the players, and Brazario's not looking too good. He's gonna go down to that Stingray as well. So, nice jump out from a Pokefan right there to make that happen. As Thorne's trying to get something going, but he's in a really bad position. It was a good jump out, but they didn't have the zone. That was a solid 10 to 15 second segment that they were getting nothing. They had two people pushed up and Pokefan back on the Stingray, and I guess nobody called out the fact that they weren't gaining any points from it. They're still in a pretty good position here, some solid defensive holding, but the game probably could have been over right now. Although with Erza flanking like this, it might be over anyway. Would have been over, as you said, but one player up on the side of El Firmin is probably going to be the end of the game as well. That's definitely going to be it. So uh, Team Olive looking really strong here on that opening game. <laughs> and we actually see they didn't even really paint any of the side of their map, um, but didn't need to as the rest of the map is in that Team Olive green right there. So... Let's take a look at the KAs here. I'm really interested to see how much Pokefan contributed. 12 KA, Sendo with a big 20 KA game, but that's contributions from all over there. Only two ink armors were needed to make that knockout. That's not something that you see a whole lot, but I know Soren certainly prefers the uh, offensive capabilities of that weapon as opposed to farming specials like we see some tries do. Yeah, and especially with the tri slosher in particular, although it does have the armor, um, sometimes it's just a bonus. You don't really need it. You can just go in with that tri slosher, as we saw Soren doing for most of the game there, um, trying to make something happen just in their spawn. And especially since Soren's one of those players who does run um, a quick respawn comeback set with that uh, tri slosher, he's going to be back at it if he messes up to go uh, in their spawn. He just needs one or two picks, and that was enough for him to make something happen for the team. And then we're going to see if he elects to stay with that on um, Kelp Dome, or he's going to be going with something a little bit different. Rainmaker Kelp Dome. This is one of those maps that I feel like hasn't changed a ton from its Splatoon 1 iteration. The basic, I guess, premise of it is about the same. There's only one way that you can go to get there. Well, okay, let me back up. You can go through the grates. That's a very scary proposition with all the blasters that are in the current meta. Or you can just try to overload with some bubbles, a baller maybe, on that right side, that choke, that doorstep. 
So I'm interested to see how they attempt to compose themselves because I know that Bubbles and the Forge, maybe not Bubbles, but the Forge in particular has kind of fallen out of favor as of late. Yeah, but I mean, we do see that, um, at least the casters can see that dude did sub in. So hopefully he might be playing something along the lines of a Forge Pro. He's, he's a, definitely a lot of shot pro player but on the other side of El Ferment I talked about that I wanted to see the splatling maybe from Getway the first game I think he definitely needs to pull it out here um on Kelp Dome as it is one of the best weapons here yeah and he is going to be pulling out there with the Stingray and definitely with the Stingray he's going to be able to hold that door area a lot if he can just keep up the Stingray pressure so right now he does see them trying to get into the middle of the map right now do have a 2v1 going on Ooh, and somebody actually gets killed from the back right there. I believe it was Rosario just getting a little bit of chip damage with oh my his goodness. roller there. And that's a full wipe going in. This is going to be a strong push for El Furman. Already down to the 22 marker right there. And although they do get stopped, that's a huge opening push. Yeah, that's a crazy opening push. It is going to be a full wipe going the other way right now. I was about to comment that uh, all of us really gilded, geared themselves up here for a strong offensive push. Dude using that brand new H3. Lots of range on that, armor as well. I mean, it's just a great weapon, something that a lot of people predict to be a meta force here. They're also using that Slosher Deco for the baller pressure, and Sendo still staying here with the range. Already this push is coming the other way. They might get it, but the Stingray just enough. Some defensive bubbles coming out. I think this push is pretty well dead in the water, but you already, man, this game's going back and forth so quick. Yeah, but honestly, that may have been one of Olive's best chances right there. Unfortunately for them, um, get away with the Stingray, and I believe, yeah, the Forge Pro player just ending that right away with the bubbles right there. Perfect execution with their specials to kind of stop that push and just stay and make sure that it was under their control right there. We do see Dude trying to go in and gets the kill with the manager of the teammate right there. And the last one up, though, is Getway on that spot. And he just needs to back out and make sure he has that Stingray. Honestly, I would just run away. But he does manage to get a kill, and he's stalling him out pretty well. I'm going to go down. This is where Olive may be able to make something happen, but oh no. Rosario and the rest of El Ferment do manage to just go in from that tool ramp and kind of just dunk it right on them with that roller. Yeah, Getway did a good job kind of slowing that down as much as possible as a one-on, as you could situation did end up going down there but did just enough to allow the rest of the team to converge on and now we do see getway once again in that same position um soren's not going to be able to approach maybe he's just going to hold on for that bowler but ooh, the distraction from soren was enough to let sendo come in with that range blaster rosario's going to go down was the only one there in mid with the rainmaker and look at that huge flank we see coming out from the side of team olive they're already in the spawn of el firmament and Soren's just going to go in from that left side, but nice play by Getway using that Stingray, making sure he had it right there to end that push. If he didn't have that, that could have been maybe the game for uh, Team Olive. I'm going to assume 9 is not there, but we're going to get into this um, really quickly. He's going to be trying to pop that Rainmaker. Just keep up the shield for the moment. Does have to pop that uh, Ink Armor to stay alive right there. And right now, he's looking pretty good to just hold it. Now, they do have most of the members of El Ferment down, but Sendo's the only one on this left side. Roller is going to try to spot him out, but nice shot by Sendo right there to make something happen. And then right now, dude needs to get one or two kills for Sendo to just go in. Sendo does manage to get a couple extra points, but not enough for them right here. Um, they're still in a pretty decent position is Urza and Soren. They're going to pick that up. That's going to be the lead coming in from Urza right there. And right now, they're looking pretty good to hold this lead. Only a minute and 30 seconds or so left. And dude is still in their base. Finally goes down right there. Rosario and the rest of El Fermin are going to need to make something happen right now. All right, Rosario right now is going to be on this top grate right here. This is actually the makings of a pretty decent push. One thing to look out for is that there is no Stingray on the side of Team Olive, so they may not be able to stall out the push if El Fermi can just get the picks necessary right here. Right now, the only one up, though, is Rosario. He's going to be able to stall out for a moment, get one pick, but dude's going to be able to take him down right now. And so far, um, Team Olive holds strong with only a minute or so left. That's going to be a very hard push to beat that they've put on the table right there. And so far, they're just going to try and get a couple extra picks as we do see Urza with that splashdown up ahead. So right now, they do manage to push the Rainmaker onto the right side of this tree area that they usually call it. And 
things are looking pretty good. This is a great area to slow because it's very far from the enemy um, to push it to your goal. But they actually do manage to get the picks out of this. And ooh, nice play from Getaway actually getting a double right there to stop the lead. And this is still looking like Olive's game right here, even though the, most of them are down. The map control is in their favor right now. And we do see um, Arm just moving in and getting one kill right there. That's going to be the start of it, getting Sendo down on that range blaster. But they need to be careful right there of Urza on that right side of them. Uh, Urza is definitely a player to come in and just flank you from behind if you aren't paying attention to him. So they do call out Urza, but Urza gets the 1v1 kill onto Arm. Um, Lamunk right there. Trying to win the 1v1, but ooh, they come in with Sendo on that range blaster to get something happen. And oof. Unfortunately for El Ferment, they started off strong, but that's going to be the end of the game for them right there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of offensive pressure there. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. They were just geared to go in, and as you see, high KAs all around the board. Three different players at 16 KA, dude chipping in four ink armors to the cause. But eventually, if that pressure continues to come in, no matter how many plays Getway could make in that situation, one of them was eventually going to go through. And, I mean, that's how it works, right? Consistent pressure, eventually something is going to crack. Yeah. We did see that for most of the pushes right there, um, Getway did have this thing right to end them, but when they were on that left side flank that uh, is notorious for a Kill Dome Rainmaker right there, it's just a sneaky way to push. Uh, they didn't get the full wipe, and that allowed Soren and uh, Urza at that point to just pop the Rainmaker, and it was a 2v2 situation, but, but with the Rainmaker pop, they had enough ink in front of them to just get the lead, and Urza pushed it up to 5. wipe nobody to touch that power claim that is remaining get a little bit of uh just because the power claim does have to respawn there well monk might be able to go ahead and grab it and actually does that's the longest overtime i've ever seen uh still a long mountain here to climb but at least they're gonna get the chance to do it yeah definitely lucky right there with the monk but they didn't have any chance of even getting to the goal right there as uh, i don't know how he just doing that slide right there but that was pretty impressive <laughs> That was impressive, as well as, I, I mean, I think, I know you follow Sendo on Twitter, so you saw the video that he posted a couple days ago saying three super jumps, 60 points coming in, and saying that it was unfair. Well, that's what it looks like. <laughs> they got the two, they jumped right in, they scored, and then they immediately kept putting the pressure on. When there's yeah, two power sure. claims coming at you, you become so preoccupied with trying to stop them that if an Erza or a Sendo sneaks in behind and gets those sneaky picks you were talking about, there's just no chance of you stopping both of them. And in this case, they weren't even able to stop one. Yeah, and even with Clam Blitz, you mentioned this on BNS quite a couple times, on those bigger maps, it definitely allows for super jumping to kind of take place. And that's definitely something you see coming out of uh, Manta Maria right there, one of those bigger maps where super jumps um, with power clams or even just a, a large amount of regular clams can really make a strong push happen. So that's kind of what Olive did there on their strong push. And from there, they just kind of held for the rest of the game. It got one kind of um, power clam in on the goal, but didn't really make too much of that as Elfram kind of wiped them right away. But um, for the most part, utilizing the super jump was their main way of getting points right there. And we're going to be going into Splat Zones on Gobi Arena. Definitely a newer map. So have you got any chance maybe to look at it a bit? Yeah, actually, we came on this. Uh, there was a league rotation here a couple nights ago. I played with some friends, and uh, we really just kind of talked over this mode, went over it, tried some different strategies. Range Blaster is so good on this map, especially if you're willing to go um, play a little bit like Sendo does, where you're confident in your aim, you're willing to push up, because it does have stronger burst damage, as most people know than a Rapid Blaster. Not to say Rapid Blaster is bad here, but I think this will be a map that Sendo will be quite comfortable sticking Range Blaster. Though they have brought in Pokefan once again, so maybe they're going to let uh, Sendo run with the regular Blaster. But, I mean, it's such a big zone. You can throw mm -hmm. a Sprinkler and it just dominates everything. Slosher Deco, great here as well. Uh, but it, I think that the way this has gone and the way they've been playing, the aggression that Team Olive has been using I feel like this is a map where it can be very difficult to get back in if you're not careful. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm with you on that, is that blasters here in general are very good. And I think an interesting thing to look at here is once again the long-range battle of maybe Pokefan versus uh, Getaway there. Because on this map, you have 
uh, pretty much 100% safety most of the time um, playing a long range weapon if you just stay up on your own plat area. It's very hard for the enemy team to kill you there as she is going to bring in that um, flat charger and on the side of El Ferment, they've actually gone for a, a little bit of a lesser um, ranged option with that mini splatling right there. It's also the original mini splatling so it's not even the new one I believe um, that just came out so Right now, we're going to be getting Brazario into the middle of the map. Pretty decent positioning for a Dynamo. Can paint pretty well on that side of the map, but Soren comes in, and that's going to be the end of uh, anything for El Fermi. Oh my gosh, not the way you want to start. Now Soren's going to push up here, just going to kind of wait and bait them in. Has the baller as well. Has the... Oh man, the Stingray's already coming out. Soren's going to run in here, make things difficult for them. Poor Brazario's just going to get bullied around here. Is able to get the kill, but you see Sendo at the top of your screen there, pushed in. Airs is pushing in as well, already down to 60. Man, what a full life at the start, not the way you want to go. Yeah, for sure. They do manage to throw up the Incarn, so maybe they can make something happen right now. They also had the temporary numbers advantage, but I believe one of the members for Team Olive just jumps in um, from spawn and ends that. They don't even manage to put up the penalty timer, unfortunately, and honestly, things are looking very grim for them right now. Um, this next push is going to actually be maybe their last if they don't get up that penalty counter. Yeah, and you saw one of them kind of jump in haphazardly. Sendo and Soren were able to just pivot over there. Arm at the top of your screen is going to try to make something happen, but Soren just giving him none. These Tenta missiles are going to be I'm, uh, just kind of a nice little slap on the wrist. Absolutely nothing going right for El Firmament that game from the get-go. And I don't, I, I really don't know about the mini Splatling pick there. I agree with everything you said about having some this piece where you can continue to fire almost completely safely from those raised positions there. They just weren't able to get set up. I guess they wanted to get their Dynamo Roller in that position, but I would have liked to see a little bit more pressure coming in from a longer range Splatling. Yeah, I, I don't know about the picks coming out from them there. I even think maybe the just the regular Roller would have been more effective for them. Um, just trying to move forward into the map and get some control up forward because um, they kind of put a lot of pressure on the the rest of their front line there with, I believe it was um, a blaster um, trying to make the way for the team. So maybe just needed to go with just a little bit of a different move there because although range can be a, a valuable option there, Soren just came in with that uh, slosher and a slosher is going to deal two shots on you before you can move as a dynamo roller. So... Um, Maybe just needed to switch that up. Yep. We'll see here what they opt to go. Tower control. This is the first time we're seeing tower control in this set. So maybe this is finally the time that they can get something built up. You see get already locked in. Probably, I don't know, which which would you go with? Would you go with the Stingray here? Yeah, I think you're definitely going to need to go with the Stingray. Um, just on tower control is if you can get that strong lead early, obviously the Stingray can more than likely hold the push for your team. Um, unless something drastic happens on the other side. So especially with you already know Pokefan insta locked on the other team, she's gonna be sticking with that splat charger stingray as well. So um definitely um need to have something to combat that if you have a um strong push early. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Monk probably going back and forth deciding which blaster to use. Probably going to go with the vanilla blaster here, though I know some people prefer rapid here because sometimes it can be difficult to do, to move people if they're back on that range or er, er, that uh, raised area, that rotating platform. But we'll see here. Uh, this should be a fun time for both Pokefin and Getway because if you get set up on top here, you do have a lot of influence over the center of the map. Yeah, so let's take a look right now. Um, actually, a little bit of a change coming out from Team Olive. They're going with a double shooter lineup, something they haven't really done um, all set. Soren is going to be going onto that end zap. Rosario goes on to the splat roller with Ninja Squid. So I like the change coming out from them. And Getway is actually going to battle with, with that Charger 1v1. And it's going to be the splatter scope. So he does have the range advantage. So let's see if that plays anything in part um, going into this game. Already, though, you see the pressure coming out from Olive here, although Soren going in a bit too deep gets taken out by Lamunk there on that blaster, and that's the custom blaster, too. Not something that I thought we'd be seeing, necessarily, that does have that inkjet, so they're probably looking to put some pressure up on the raised area in, um, uh, in combination with a push. However, right now, they have neither of those things. As Sendo on the vanilla blaster going to go in, arm doing a great job taking out that splashdown before it could crash. Uh, but already Olive moving, and Arm's in an awkward position here. Gonna get wiped down by Irza. 
Yeah, not the position you want to be in, but at least for the rest of the team seems to be in a decent position, but Urza takes one out. Urza might be able to get a second, actually, so things actually may not be looking too good for them. We do see Brazaria though, coming in with that roller, kind of stops the push right there. The Stingray comes to back him up, but Urza's still in their court. Urza's just been dominating. Finally goes down to Brazaria right there with that roller. And now, finally, El Fermi can try and get back into the middle of the map, but Sendo's just going to stall him out maybe long enough with that blast so the rest of the team can come back in. Mm -hmm. They're finally pushing in here, and I like this position that you're seeing Getway very slowly move to. Trying to put more pressure, be a little bit more involved. One of the big criticisms of the Chargers in Splatoon 2 is that they aren't always necessarily active. They're defensive weapons, slower weapons, so I like that Getway has been a little bit more mobile this game as opposed to just sitting and trying to pick people off. Yeah, definitely um, want to take a look at that right there. We do see Brazaro coming in with that roller. Kind of missed time, but works out for them anyway. So this is definitely the position they want to start up a push. Pokefan was going down right there. She's not going to have the Stingray for quite some time. Um, this is actually the perfect position for them. And Brazaro is just going to be able to ride that tower. But I want someone else to be riding the tower. The Ninja Squid Roller should be up in front trying to get easy picks for their team. Maybe he's just going to wait for Getway to come back in. Uh, they need to make the call right here, but actually Getway is going to be the one pushing forward instead of the roller. Somehow working out for them so far, um, but let's see if that uh, kind of leads to the end of their push. Nice splashdown though to stay alive on the tower from Bizarro. Mm -hmm. Just enough there, 24 not going to get them past that second checkpoint, but it was still a really good push. And I I was with you at the very beginning of that saying, oh, why is Rosario riding the tower? Get your roller off. But Pokefan with the ranged up on that little area, we talked about it earlier trying to move up and assist with the pushes. That was actually really clever, kind of a zoning tool almost, and uh, contributed there to what was a pretty good push and the best look Alphermit's had all day. Yeah, definitely a good push coming out from El Ferment right there. Um, and honestly, maybe a little bit of an early Stingray coming out from Getway on that other side. But it is going to work out because um, one of the best parts about the Stingray is you can have a teammate come in with you to help. Um, just call it out where they are. Getway comes in with that Ninja Squid, finishes them off. And so far looking pretty good. A nice Stingray coming out from Pokefan to stall out as they did have um, a man disadvantage actually. So that's going to push the, the tower back into the middle of the map. Uh, nice picks coming out from Urza and Soren right there in the middle of our map. We see, and now Sendo's going to be the one riding the tower probably. And so, yeah, he calls it out for Pokefed to take the tower. And this is where things are going to have to look up for uh, Team Olive as they already do have the Stingray down on the side of El Firmament. Yep, Stingray already down, Erza in the court, Sendo pushed up with the aid of Erza. It's a scary look all around. Soren does go down here, but Pokefan is still on the tower, just barely getting pushed off. They're all still alive though right now, and finally Brasario comes in, crashes down. I believe Sendo had to back all the way up there, away from the tower. They're going to have to be careful though to make sure no cheeky uh, tower stalls come out here. It does look like it's returning back to the middle. Brasario coming in and getting another kill. Some very, very clutch plays though coming out from El Firmament. There was a lot that could have gone wrong there for them. Yeah, for sure. Rosario is taking full advantage of his Ninja Squid for sure. I'm getting picks without um, Team Olive kind of knowing where he's going to be coming from. Always have to be wary of him. And right now, um, Pokefan is going to be popping that Stingray. But look, Urza and her are the only ones up. And Arm is coming in for a flank. They do spot him out though, so this is pretty decent. But Arm's actually able to get one. Distract him longer. Wow. Rosario comes from behind. And that's going to be the end of the push right there for Olive. Only have less than 20 seconds left in this game now. The play of the game there coming out from Arm. I was so worried that they weren't going to be able to call him out. Then they did call out Arm. Then Arm still managed to get the double anyway and bought enough time for Brazario to come in and clean up that last little bit. Erza now making a play for, um, making a really big play. They're going to give them a chance to get back on. That Stingray should last just long enough, though. All of them going to go down to it. The GG Ray ends another game, but two times there. Clutch, clutch defense coming out from El Furman as they finally get on the board with a win. Yeah, for sure. Going to have to... I mean, they had to get that one at this point. Uh, what yeah. was that game? That was game five, correct? Yeah, they were, they were down 4-0, yeah. and this is a best of nine, so... Uh, all right. Hey, we got at least one more. Let's go. Yeah. As we are going to be getting into our next map here, um, which is Port Mackerel Rainmaker. So um, definitely going to be seeing maybe similar comps from each side as 
Um, the Stingray definitely helped both teams kind of stop pushes. And obviously on this map, Stingray, you know, dominates for sure. Going to be interesting to see what um, Urza goes with, I think. Sometimes he'll elect to go with a 52 gal Deco for Stingray. Sometimes he'll also go for a sloshing machine. So I think that's something to look forward to from Urza. Mm -hmm. 52 gal Deco, a great weapon on this map. I remember when we were at Genesis and we heard about that coming out, everyone said, all right, Port Mackerel's dead. Curling bombs, stingrays, be seeing a lot of those here, I'm certain. Let's go ahead and get a quick sync test. I'm at 42, 43, Perfect. 44. All right, great job. We are back onto it here. Um, but one thing that I've always felt about this map is that this is one of those maps that I feel like you don't need everything to go right to make like a decent push. If you can get it up into that, uh, past that court area in, in one of those lanes, you can play a sort of aggressive defense that there are more outlets in this game than in Splatoon 1. I feel like you can kind of identify where the enemy is going to come back from and you can waste a lot of time in that way. Yeah, definitely one of the, I think we talked about this kind of on Clam Blitz is a lot of attention, maybe paid attention to the Rainmaker or Power Clam. Um, so, if you can come in with a flank from the other side from another lane, that can definitely open up things for your team. And I'm interested to see if any of the teams can kind of kind of get that going for them here as we get into this one. And uh, we do see Urza is going to be going with that 52 gal Deco. So let's see how that plays out. It's also got Ninja Squid, but they've got two Ninja Squid players on the side of El Firmament as well. So that's going to be interesting to see if they're able to utilize that for maybe a flanking advantage. Mm -hmm. One fun little thing that I do want to point out here, Pokefan using that respawn Punisher. Don't see that a whole lot. It's one of my favorite abilities in the game, but as we see Chargers kind of develop and become more of a part of the meta, we are seeing it more. But we're also seeing three go down, armed once again, keeping up the momentum from the last game, some big plays. This Stingray going to make this push difficult, but 34 in this opening, this is a completely different El Firmament. Yeah, El Firmament's looking pretty strong right now trying to get something going early in the game and that's exactly what you want to do i think on a map like port mackerel where you've got a stingray to kind of stop the enemy um from pushing forward on their own so nice plays coming out from el firmament so far hopefully though they're able to stop this push um but they already do have the splatling down though he's respawning at the moment so things aren't looking too good for them right now their only advantage at the moment is that they managed to get the rainmaker and finally stop them in their court uh, and once again, it's the custom blaster in this day and age of the vanilla blaster being the dominant force that it is. This is the second time, I believe, that we've seen the custom blaster come out here from El Firmament. Gotta watch out, though. Air's on the side. Does get called out. Arm is kind of just living in the middle right now. Clean picks. Arm once again going absolutely ham. Rosario's gonna come in as well. Pick up the kill on the unsuspecting Soren. Rainmaker reset. But right now, the pressure has been put on this entire game by El Firmament. They've moved up. They've been the ones putting the offensive pressure on. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing from them. Yeah, Brazario <laughs> unfortunately goes down to the curling bomb of Urza right there. And that's actually going to probably be the end of anything El Firmament can get going. Look kind of strong for a moment right there. They do have decent map control though at the moment. So um, it's going to stall any type of push Team Olive maybe tries to get. And they actually do pick up the Rainmaker just to make sure that Team Olive can't. So I like the play coming out from Bizarre right there. Pushing it to their side of the map. He did see most of his team members were down. So he just decided, let me try and rush this away from uh, anything happening on our side. Mm -hmm. To use a football term, I know that this isn't uh, clan blitz anymore, but it's almost like a punt, right? You realize you're not going to be able to get anything. The enemy is pushing at you. Why not take the Rainmaker, put it in a, or in a position where they have to run a little further? And we actually see now maybe a more legitimate push here coming out. We're going to see Monkey probably jumping back in here as another trade goes down. That's actually three down. Arm is pushed up incredibly far here right on the pedestal trying to work around here and try to get out one of Urza or Sendo does get that Sendo also goes down this one's running right up all they have to do is just touch the pedestal here come on get away gets up there and another big win and once again it's been Arm playing that great defense in that last game and this time leading the charge they're working around both Urza and Sendo not a whole lot of players capable of doing that yeah, for sure. On the side of El Firmament, they're looking really strong right now. I'm liking all the decision making that they're doing. As we did mention, um, Brazario just decided, let me get the Rainmaker out as far away as I can. And honestly, that may have been the game. He was the only one up for his team and decided, uh, I'm going to take this as far away as possible. And that bought enough time for his team to come back in. They 
Team Olive had to repop the Rainmaker Shield. Just too much going on. That's an extra maybe 10 or 15 seconds that they wasted um, because it just Bizarre decided to kind of rush forward. And I like the decision coming in from him. Mm, great decision. We see Poke fans subbing out. So I think that might mean that Dude is coming back in here. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, no, that would that would make sense because I know mm -hmm. Nike's not here. But yeah, dude, gonna be coming back in here. We're moving on now to Splat Zones on. Let me double check here. Splat Zones on Blackbelly Skate Park. So, wait, no, that's week two maps. Let me back up. Okay, Splat Zones on the Reef. Okay, this makes more sense. That long, long Splat Zone that's right there under the bottom of it. I can see the H three just swallowing that up. If that's what dude elects to go for. Yeah, I can definitely see the H3 nozzle nose doing work here as well. Um, pop it up ink armors, and I think it can control that middle bridge area pretty decently with suction bombs and its range. So um, I wouldn't be too surprised if dude goes for that. Urza's probably going to get off the 52 gal deco, go back to his trusty splatter shot or something like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if Soren goes with that tri slosher. I think it's a weapon that's really good here. But I'd also be expecting maybe a slosher deco coming from him because both of those are phenomenal weapons on this map. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with the buckets. I'm interested in seeing what Brasario goes here because I know Ninja Roller or Ninja Squid Roller is it's one that a lot of people like to use here. So we'll see if they end up going with that. I, I hope he doesn't go back to the Dynamo. I think that one might be put away for the day. Mm -hmm. Not a great pick here on the Reef, even if you do manage to get it set up. But if you're El Ferment, I think you don't mess with success, right? I mean, maybe Getway switches over to the bubble or to the bubble splatling there, that heavy deco. But other than that, I mean, it's really just been a change in their play style, right? It hasn't necessarily been... I mean, there were a couple games they had some questionable picks, but I think for the most part, the comp hasn't changed too much. It's just been the way they attack. Yeah, it's definitely just been some slight changes to their decision making we saw earlier um on clam blitz was manta maria where they were very hesitant and on that map once they got any type of picks they went in uh or i shouldn't say that map on port macro rainmaker um we just saw that once they got a pick or two they were up in the enemy team's court so i'm liking the adjustments made by um al firmament to try and make something happen um in their favor so let's see if that keeps up with them on a mode like splat zones here um which honestly team olive has dominated all day so you, you do call it out right there they are going to be going for the splatling deco on the side of getway along with two ninja squid players as well so uh, i'm liking the picks coming out from them this is a very solid lineup i think coming out from elferman and it's actually not going to be the h3 we're going double slosher deco here Dude going to be playing it along with Soren, but going to get taken out here. They've kind of lost the bridge in this situation, but they did a pretty good job of cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. Going to get some paint here as Erza tries to duel with Monkey in this situation. Going to jump down here. I like the decision there from Erza, but I like the defense there from Getway even more. Choosing to back up immediately, not even bother with shooting it down. As it goes back the other way, Al Firmament once again being the ones putting the opening pressure on. Yeah, definitely right here. He's got the splash in as well. Gonna pop that to stay alive. He does have the advantage in this 1v1 until he gets flanked from behind there by Urza. So Urza coming in strong to help Sendo win his battle right there. Now he's gonna be going in onto Brazario. And Brazario's trying to get something going. Urza actually gets another kill. So Urza's looking really strong as well before finally going down to Lamonk right there. And he's the only one up. So this might actually be end up being a lead change if uh, it only takes down for a couple more seconds which it is yep only a couple more seconds here this is so scary right double bucket whenever it comes here you're not safe anywhere because it does have those falling shots and as you mentioned earlier it is a two hit splat so he's just been running back and forth here running for his life rosario gonna try to crash down here as well because this timer is slowly starting to take away a great clean shot there Poor Monkey, though, as he continues to run around. The lead going back the other way, finally. But this has been a much more neutral game than any of these sets so far. Yeah, and we saw that nice direct coming out from Lamonk actually staggered the spawn of Soren. So it was a 3v4 situation for quite a bit. Olive did hang back, though. So I like the decision coming out from them. But unfortunately, once they do finally go in um, with all four players there, Lamonk gets a direct, and the rest of his team kind of wipes the floor with them. So. Um, nice play coming out from El Ferment. This is actually going to probably be the last push possible by um, Team Olive. They do have the double baller though, which is going to neutralize the zone for them at the moment. Also cap it. So Team Olive actually playing that to perfection. Two ballers and the splash down capable of capping that zone pretty easily. So Team Olive showing a great um, execution with their special usage right there. 
And one point that I just want to point out here really quickly, you see that teams, especially higher level teams, don't paint their base very often. It's so they can do things like that. When they're mm -hmm. three or four down, they can paint their base, reliably get all three or four of their specials at one time, and then come in, and it's almost impossible to stop a zone take in that scenario. Yeah, you're 100% right. I know Team Olive in particular has done that in the past, where they just um, let whichever player who has the best special for the game, um, they keep the paint around to spawn for them. And in this case, they needed all of them. So all of them started painting right away to get something going. And that actually is going to be a lead change as well. Nice kill coming out from Soren kind of keeps them in a position to even get a greater lead right here. And honestly, because Soren getting that one pick, they may be able to end this game and they do so nice plays coming out from Soren and urza in the middle of the map just getting one secure kill and making sure that they can't cap the zone on the side of elf ferment until sendo can respawn back in and that is actually going to be the set i believe five to two in favor of team olive yeah and uh, just great composure there from them. A lot of teams, especially as they're coming up in the ranks, lower level teams, even mid-level teams, they'll go three or four down. And that's just such a scary situation to be in, especially when your opponent doesn't have any penalty. You know, if you make a misplay, you'll probably lose the game. You've just been staggered. Hey, just build up all your specials, crash in. They can't stop all of them. And there you go. Sometimes that's what it takes. But great composure to all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really like the momentum was definitely going against them at that point. So to kind of weather that storm and get their last win after losing the last two, uh, it's good to see them coming in there. Yeah, for sure. And I think it was a great showing from them because when we opened up the cast, we said maybe they haven't been performing as well as they would like to perform themselves. Um, placing, what was it, fifth in the Squid Burst tournament, which is fifth is still an amazing placement, but Team Olive obviously wants to be in that 3-2-1 area. Um, so from them, I think this is a great start to their season, and hopefully in the future, they, this propels them to do even greater in their next upcoming rounds against, honestly, a pretty stacked um, division in that Europe side. So I'm yeah, liking that Europe, Yeah, that Europe side is, like, unreal. Ethereal, Gagaku... Olive, El Firmament. I mean, that's there's not a bad team in there. And Kraken Paradise, too. Kraken Paradise, Kraken Paradise. is off. Yeah, yeah, Kraken Paradise, who I believe went through the Squid Birds tournament with kind of ease at some point. So um, they got the first place there. And honestly, to a lot of these top players at the moment, Kraken Paradise is the best team at the moment, at least in an online situation. Mm -hmm. So... The next matchup that we do have lined up for today is Ethereal versus Gagaku, and I know you're not slated to talk about that one, but you might be the biggest Ethereal fan I know. So tell, uh, talk to me about why. Why Ethereal? Why are they so good? Well, Ethereal is a great team just because they've got...